this I'm just gonna sit here laid back to this nice mellow beat, you know And drop some smooth lyrics Cause it's 88 Time to set it straight, you know what I'm saying? And there ain't no half stepping Word I'm ready What's up y'all? We're back here at General Report um, We have Malik Petway He's a 6'6 small forward out of Sacred Heart High School He's class of 2015 we have Charles Fisher, he's a 6'1 and a half point guard who also plays for Sacred Heart High School in Waterbury. Um, they're the returning class S state champions from 2013 and 14. We're going to talk to them and get to know a little bit more about them and their expectations for themselves as well as uh, Sacred Heart. All right. All right, so Malik, being that you've been there, you know, since your freshman year and you, you got some transfers like Mustafa and um, Charles Fisher from St. Joe's, how, how did that make you feel, being that you guys only won three and six in your freshman and sophomore year to last year going all the way and winning a state championship? Well, you know, my freshman year and sophomore year just made me strive harder mm -hmm. to have a winning season. Mm -hmm. And when Charles and Staff came, we're a winning team. Okay. Yeah. So well, how did you think that, you know, Charles and the addition of Mustafa helped um, your game as far as, you know, being able to show, showcase some more of those being at Mustafa to a lot of camps, to uh, Angles All American, mm -hmm. he brought that information back to the team, which helped me become a great player. Mm -hmm. and Joe, you know, how did how did Charles help um, with your team and the success? Well, team? Charles helped our team by bringing defense, and with him talking a lot, he became a leader. You know, yeah. you know what what do you think is going to be the difference in you guys this year? Being that last year. You guys kind of got thrown, you know, those guys came in last minute and they didn't really get a preseason games and stuff like that with you. Um, well, it's going to be more fun. Uh, being that you transferred from St. Joe's, a state powerhouse, who maybe a year or two before you got there won the state championship, right? Mm -hmm. um, being that you left them and you had the potential of playing varsity your following year, how hard was it for you to leave St. Joe's to come to Sacred Heart, who only won nine games in the two years before you got there. It wasn't that hard. I felt that coming to Sacred Heart was the right choice for me. Um, I learned a lot from my coach, previous coach, Chris Watts, and I, I think I brought that here to Sacred Heart to make us a better team. So what, were you concerned about as far as them, you know, like I said, St. Joe's making a run to the finals in the state championship rather than coming to the Sacred Heart and you probably could have went through another six game, three game win season. Would you have been okay with that? Yeah, I would have. Yeah. Been okay. mm -hmm. So what 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 was some of the what were one of the reasons, you know, and I'm sure there's some other personal reasons, but what was you know one of the main reasons that you think you needed to leave St. Joe's and the new, you know, head coach Chris Watts? to come play for uh, Sacred Heart? Um, making the choice to come to Sacred Heart, I felt comfortable making this decision. You know, it's closer to home. I actually love it. I like it at Sacred Heart. Mm -hmm. did, you have, did you already like know players on the team or kids in the school? Like what, where, why was there such a comfort level for you to, want to go to Sacred Heart? Yeah, I knew m most of the people at the school and on my team. So was there you know, anything you know, that Chris Watts, the coach at St. Joe, he was a new coach then when you got there. Is there any reason why he should feel that he did anything wrong? Or do you have any ill will towards him or the school? No, he didn't do nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. I actually thank him for everything he did for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he taught me a lot. Okay. So do you think that you could have took some of the stuff that you learned while you were there um, and brought and bring it over to Sacred Heart or in your future games? Yeah, being more of a leader and talking more on the court. When did you be click into your mind like, yo, we can actually go ahead and win this whole thing? First game, I knew we were, you know, we're pretty big, and I, we're a talented team. So you knew the first game, like, yo, this team yeah. can win it all. Mm -hmm. What about you, Malik? Did you when did you realize that your team was one of the best teams in the state? I realized that when we played our first game, that we played together, and it was just a lot of fun. So, what about the crowd attendance? Because I don't know if Charles can speak for the Sacred Heart crowd attendance. How, what about from your two years there before those guys arrived? How, how was the attendance at the games? Um, there wasn't a lot of people. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, so, I feed off the crowd's energy. Yeah, so that so, helped in your game. 
you know, my brain was dying in childhood, there were a lot of people, so that really entered my energy. T, what were some of the surprises for you guys? Um, you know, especially for you when we being that you played in front of uh, five people in the dog in some of your games. Well, the surprises were playing quasi for the championship game. Mm -hmm. There was over a thousand people there. Mm -hmm. I was nervous, but I had to play through it. Okay. Yeah. All right, so Charles, being that you came from St. Joe's, and I know St. Joe's had a lot of packed house games, but you weren't able to, you know, play many varsity minutes when you were here. How did it feel for you coming to Sacred Heart and playing in front of a thousand people and knowing that you're going to be on the floor in front of those people? Yeah, I felt good knowing I was going to be playing in front of people. And so no nerves, nothing affected you where, you know, like, oh my God, everybody's looking at me and I'm actually going to have the ball. In my hand. No, I try not to pay attention to the crowd. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so how many of those games do you think you guys had this year when it was like over 800 to 1,000 people there? <clears throat> I say three of them, or four of them, state championship game. Mm -hmm. yeah. So none of your playoff games were like that? Uh, like the state playoff game? Yeah, most of them, yeah. yeah. So more than three or four. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, so for you, Malik, you know, being that you know, you're, this is your a big year for you yeah. coming up to be a senior and stuff like that. You know, how do you think that you, you know, after coming off of that success last year, can balance it and earn yourself a scholarship without yeah. overplaying the team? Well, you know, I'm just staying humble. You know, just a different way, trying to get stronger, trying to prepare myself for the college level. Okay. So being that you are being recruited by some Division One schools, um, what are some of the schools that are interested in you right now? Uh, Thompson, Northeastern, uh, Wagner, Fairfield, a couple of, couple of other schools. Okay. So for you, with your recruitment process, does does it really matter for you, um, like where the school is located at? You know, can um, you go to California, Texas, and Florida, or you really want to kind of stay where mommy can come? I think. I can go anywhere. I can go to California, mm -hmm. Washington. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter as long as I go to college. So, what about you? You know, the, the being that you had a cousin, uh, Calvin Davis, who played at San Diego State, right? Yeah. And he actually played and got in the game and was a contributor to their team. You know, how, what, how has he been an influence to you and, and helping you with this? Well, he's been a big influence by telling me which college is good, mm -hmm. how to what offense they play, and he, he's been a big help. Big help. So what do you think um, from last year's, you know, your last year's style of play and game to this year, what do you think that coaches will see that's a difference in you? Um, <clears throat> the way my ball handling has improved, my shot, yeah. my feet work, my footwork. Okay. All right, so Malik, being that you, you know, you got the label of being the Rasheed Wallace of the Sacred Heart team, and I'm sure it's not just because you're 6'7", six, 6'8", six, you can shoot the long ball like him. You know, um, a lot of people have categorized you as the, the bad boy of the team uh, at times because you're some of your, uh, you know, your outbursts and stuff. Like what, you know, what was some of the things that you worked on over this summer to help you be prepared for all the beating, you know, the, the grabbing and the getting beat up for during the season? Well, I just been lifting weights, mm -hmm. just trying to keep my head low. Mm -hmm. A lot of teams have scouting report that you know, I had a hot head, so they're trying to get my head, mm -hmm. so I get a lot of texts. Mm -hmm. You guys both play on the same AAU team together, right? Yes. What team is that again? USA. Okay. So being that that you know you're playing for a guy who played Division One and, and Troy Bradford, and he has a lot of experience and being a you know a good ball player and stuff like that, and being around the game, how has he helped you in, in his growth or in this process of getting ready to prepare for college and stuff like that? Um, he just helped me by you know talking to me, helping me get more confidence in my game. That's what helped me get more Division One scholarships. Mm -hmm. I don't want to thank for that. What about you? Mm -hmm. you know, they told me to just work on my ball handling and keep my poise on the, on the court. Mm -hmm. and always look for my teammates. my teammates. Okay. So now being at that, you know, Troy has a big name and the program yeah. is a good name and stuff like that. What where were some of the states that you guys traveled in? Um, <clears throat> well, we went to Springfield during a live tournament. There was over 50 colleges there. We won the tournament in Ohio. Oh, you went to Ohio? Yeah, but it's been for a lot. A lot of coaches. Yeah, so what was the furthest 
What was the furthest oh, that furthest? you guys played at under them? Well, the, the furthest was Ohio. Mm -hmm. So what was the difference if you had to look at, you know, playing in Ohio and against teams in the Midwest to playing against guys in New York? Well, guys in, guys in New York are more scrappier. And I guess um, guys in Ohio are much stronger mm -hmm. and they're more fundamentally skilled. Mm -hmm. So being that you, you know, for you it's a lot harder because you're a point guard and stuff like that, where Malik, he's a lot more, you know, he can just post up and, and step out a little bit on the outside. How was the game for you being in, in, uh, as a point guard playing in Ohio as well as well as playing in New York? What was the difference? They play above the rim and I don't really play that above the rim that much. So, you know, I've just been working on my legs and jumping ability. Who plays above the rim? The guys. The guards. Oh, everywhere? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when when you had to compare it to like a New York guard against a guard in Ohio, what would be the you think would be the difference of those guys? A uh, New York guard can run up and down the court, you know, fast. And a guard in Ohio, not as fast. A lot more fundamental. <laughs> yeah, more fundamental. Oh, okay. So how, how long have you guys known each other? You and uh, Oh, since we were in fifth grade. Yeah. yeah. So do you think that that helped you guys in the season, being that you already had a relationship? Because I can think of most of you guys kind of knew each other coming up. Yeah. So did that help with the team chemistry and everything going forward? Definitely. Um, I was playing with each other since fifth grade. Mm -hmm. yeah, it just helped us. Okay, so being that you guys this year, you have the big bullseye on your back. Um, a lot of teams are looking to, to come in and knock you down. And you know, the people, are, the people are obviously going to try to say that your state championship is not as big as, you know, winning a double L and everything, what would you have to say to something like that? Well, we play a lot of double L teams, you know, if you beat them, they can't say as much, and, you know, class A, it's not that good, so. Mm -hmm. So you, you wouldn't let, you're not going to let people say no. you won the weaker class or stuff like that? No, I'm just going to get another one. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right, so being that you guys are coming off of a state championship um, and it's been the best year so far for you last year um, since you've been there, uh, what, are, what are some of your team goals for this year? Our team goals is you know, to win the Springfield game in the hoop ball. Mm -hmm. And then I think we have one in Bridgeport at the uh, uh, Webster Bank Arena. Yeah, I'm just hoping that our team is really good. So how do you feel about that, like uh, to have the opportunity to go and play in a national event like that? Well, it just motivates me to bring my A game. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are you going to be able to keep, you know, to keep your game within the team, knowing that there could be 90,000 coaches there watching? Well, yeah, I'm going to just play my game. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just help my team out. Mm -hmm. you know, even if I follow up, I'm going to still cheer my team on because I know I'm a, t I'm a team leader. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what about for you, Charles, being that you're coming in now, <coughs> you know, you're getting bigger games, more national, national level games. How, how do you think that that's, you know, your game? How, how do you think you can contribute to that um, in playing in the hoop ball games as well as in, um, you know, the Western Bank Arena? Um, I can contribute a lot to it. Uh, I can bring, you know, good defense to the team. That helps out a lot. Mm -hmm. And, you know, looking for my other teammates. All right, so being that you have guys from all over the state now, I've talked to kids that say, yeah, I'm thinking about transferring to Sacred Heart. I'm a junior, but I'll be, you know, whatever. Stuff like that. Um, how, how, how do you feel about something like that? Knowing that you were one of the transfers that came in and had a battle for a starting spot. How do you feel if uh, a kid transfers in, you know, with the same skill level or heart that you have um, to, to try to take your spot? I mean, as long as they bring something positive to the team, it's it's all good. So I, I understand that you guys are playing a lot of fall ball, a lot of summer basketball together, and stuff like that, and then blowing teams out and stuff like that. Do you realize that that is going to make a lot more people want you guys to lose? Right? Yeah. 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 But you're okay with that? Yeah. It's, it's game. How has the school environment changed knowing, you know, at least during the basketball season, that you guys were the, the big dogs? Well, it changed a lot. Um, you know, from us going for a 3 and 20 record in the state championship to help us, because you know, people looked up to us more. Mm -hmm. And you know, got extra oatmeal cookies at lunch now. Oh, yeah, so. yeah. So, how did you feel, Malik, being that you played in the state championship and the Mohegan Sun? 
Uh, how, how did you feel about just playing in that type of venue? No, not really. Not. It just motivated me to win that game, just to push myself towards the win. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about for you, Charles? Playing there was a great atmosphere. That was my first time being there, and mm -hmm. you know, I really wanted to win that game. Mm -hmm. But what about because people always talk about how in arenas it's a difference than playing in a high school. Uh, because of the backdrop and the basket, you know, when you're looking back, there's a thousand people or, you know, the wall is further away. How, did that, any of that affect you guys in your shot or? Uh, yeah, on the glass, you can see the people through the back of it. That affected my shot. Mm -hmm. well, not yet. What about for you, John? Yeah, it was very bright in there. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think was the turning point in the championship game when you really like, okay, I know we're going to win this championship? Because it seemed like you guys kind of struggled in the beginning with, with, in that game. Well, I knew we were going we to win the game when we stopped by the dunk. Yeah, but that was like 30 seconds left in the game. Yes, I knew we were going to win the game. <laughs> <laughs> true. True, true. How, how, do you, how, how do you think that the new upcoming freshman, uh, or incoming freshman, Raheem Solomon, can contribute to the team, you know, knowing that he's coming in also with a lot of hype? Um, he can contribute to the team by playing a lot of defense, mm -hmm. blocking a lot of shots, and just, you know, getting a lot of steals. Uh, Charles, what do you think that? How do you think that Raheem or any of the kids? You got Corey working out a lot. You got Legend working out. How do you think that those guys who are now playing a lot more games with you? How do you think that they, as collectively, can come and help the team? By uh, bringing positive attitude, um, definitely working hard at practice. You know, it'll get us all better. From last year, we only had a six-man rotation. So by them coming in, you know, it'll be easier so I can get break. How do you feel about, you know, winning by 40 and the coach taking you out in the third quarter and your numbers are not where you think they should be? How do you think you can? Well, you just got to stay humble and cheer your team on no matter what happens. You know, as long as I win, as long as we win, you know, I'm okay with that. All right, so we're winding up the show. Um, again, we've been talking to the Sacred Heart of Waterbury, the Sacred Heart of Waterbury uh, High School Boys team, who was the Class S state champions. Um, so we're going to leave you on this, Malik. If you had to pick four guys out of Waterbury um, to create your own team and the coach, who would the guys be? Um, I would stay with Sacred Heart because mm -hmm. we won the championship with them. So who, yeah. would, who would those guys be? Um, Mustafa, Charles, Tyron, and I say myself. And who would the coach be? John Carroll. Uh, yeah. The same hard coach? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So who would your four plus coach be, Charles? I'd pick Sean Coles, Malik Pedway, Mustafa Hearn, and Tyron Flowers. Okay. And who would the coach be? John Carroll. So you guys obviously have a lot of love for your coach. Um, again, I want to thank you guys for coming. Uh, we're going to come and check out some more of your games and some workouts and stuff like that. And uh, we have some footage of you that we're going to let everybody see. And uh, just wish you guys the best of luck, whether it's in high school, college, or in life. And uh, I appreciate you for coming. All right? Thanks, man. Thank you.